Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 12.2b. I've entitled this video, Resistance and Removal. This video is going to cover pages 334 and 335. Resistance and Removal. Many Native American peoples did not want to give up their lands. However, the Seminole in Florida were the only group to successfully resist removal. They faced pressure in the early 1830s to sign treaties giving up their land, but the Seminole leader, Osceola, and his followers refused to leave. They decided to fight instead. Osceola was born a Creek, but lived among the Seminole of Florida. Quote, I will make the white man red with blood and then blacken him in the sun and rain. Osceola vowed. Question number one, what made the Seminoles in Florida different from the rest of the Native American tribes? Well, they were the ones that fought back and were successful in resisting their removal. Question number two, why was Osceola an important figure for the Seminoles? He was their leader, and he led them in fighting back against the Americans. The Seminole Wars. In 1835, the U.S. Army arrived in Florida to force the removal of the Seminole. Instead, in December 1835, a group of Seminole attacked troops led by Major Francis Dade as they marched across central Florida. Only a few soldiers survived. The Dade Massacre prompted a call for additional troops to fight the Seminole. Between 1835 and 1842, about 3,000 Seminole and African Americans known as Black Seminole fought some 30,000 U.S. soldiers. The Black Seminole had escaped from Georgia and South Carolina slaveholders. Some lived among the Seminole people. Others had built their own settlements. Like the Seminole, they did not want to move. One reason is that they feared the American soldiers would force them back into slavery. Together, the Seminole and Black Seminole attacked white settlements along the Florida coast. They made surprise attacks and then retreated back into the forest and swamps. The war cost the U.S. government over $20 million and the lives of more than 1,500 soldiers. Many Seminole also died. Others were captured and forced to move west. In 1842, with most of the surviving Seminole now in Indian Territory, the fighting stopped. War broke out again in 1855 over what little land in Florida the Seminole had left. By 1858, the few remaining Seminole had escaped into the Everglades, where their descendants still live today. Question number three, what was the Dade Massacre? That was when a group of Seminoles attacked American troops and took out most of them and the word massacre means a slaughter of, of people and so this was a successful attack by the Seminole on two American troops. Question four, who were the black Seminoles? Well these were the group of African Americans who had escaped slavery uh, from Georgia and southern plantations and did not want to go back to that life and so they fought with the Seminoles. They also sometimes just lived in that area and they did not want to move, which is the next question. Question five, what is an important reason why the black Seminoles fought back against, um, uh, against the Americans instead of moving? Well, they didn't want to be captured by the soldiers and forced back into a life of slavery. Question six, how did the Seminoles and black Seminoles use guerrilla warfare to harass the Americans in Florida? Well, as we remember from a couple chapters before, guerrilla warfare, which we talked about in the Revolutionary War, guerrilla warfare is when you have a smaller force than the opponent you're attacking. And so what you do is you do quick hit and run attacks. You come in, you make a quick hit, and then you retreat back into hiding because you can't face that organization, that group, your opponent head on because they clearly outnumber you. So you have to hit them with quick strikes and then flee back into your area. And it's too hard for the main force of opponents to find you. And that's exactly what the Seminoles did in this case. Life in the West. Oh, I might have skipped. Did I skip one? Let's go back. Did I skip one? Ah, oh, yes, I did. Let's go back to number seven. What impact did the Seminole Wars have on the United States and on the Seminole people? Well, as you can see from the reading, it cost America a lot of money, over $20 million, and definitely both sides lost a lot of lives. And sadly for um, Seminole history, a lot of the Seminoles did end up leaving or dying in those wars, and then some did actually go back to the the area known as the Everglades and their descendants live there today, but it definitely had a major impact on their lives and on American history as well as Florida joined the rest of our states east of the Mississippi River 
in getting rid of most of the Native Americans who had once lived there. Now we're ready to move on. Life in the West. By 1842, only a few scattered groups of Native Americans remained east of the Mississippi River. Most of them now lived in the West. They had given up more than 100 million acres of land. In return, they received about 68 million and 32 million acres west of the Mississippi. There they lived, organized by nations, on reservations. Eventually, white settlement would extend into these areas as well. Once again, lies and promises broken. The five civilized tribes relocated in the eastern half of Indian Territory on lands already claimed by several Plains peoples, including the Osage, Comanche, and Kiowa. The U.S. Army built forts in the area and promised to protect the five civilized tribes and maintain peace in the area. The Choctaw Police Force, known as the Light Horsemen, also helped maintain order and public safety. Settled in their new homes, the five civilized tribes developed their own constitutions and governments. They built farms and schools. However, the disputes over removal that arose within each nation during the 1830s continued to divide the groups for years to come. Question number eight. By 1842, most Native Americans lived west of which river? The Mississippi River. Question nine. The Native Americans were organized by nations and forced to live on what that we call areas of land set aside for them? Reservations. That comes from the word reserve. This was land reserved for them. Now don't don't take this the right way in the sense that this wasn't a good thing. This was land reserved for Native Americans because it was deemed as not good enough for Americans. So this wasn't like a fancy reservation in a restaurant. This was, hey, you can have this junky land because we don't even see a purpose for it. And that would even be eventually trampled on when the state of Oklahoma would be uh, uh, colonized by our own settlers. And question number 10. Where were the five civilized tribes relocated to? The eastern part of the state of Oklahoma. That would be their location, as you can see on the map right here. Well, thank you so much for watching. Before we go, here is the meme for today. One does not simply beat the Seminoles. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.